Welcome to a video lesson where I'll be covering top 10 ideas for the black pieces in the accelerated dragon variation of the Sicilian defense. This is a very fighting opening for black against 1e4 that is aimed at creating imbalances and looking for the winning chances. This is the starting position today. It's the most popular way that people play both at amateur and professional level. And perhaps in the next video, I'll be covering top 10 ideas in other similar situation where white develops this pawn to c4 before the knight. And that's a very popular variation as well called the Marozzi structure. All right, the first big idea and thing you need to understand is that this pawn on e4 is what gives white an advantage. These minor pieces are benefiting from that. This pawn is taking away some squares from the black's minor pieces. And when you can make d7 to d5 work tactically, it's usually a great idea. You're challenging their central control with this move, and here it works very smoothly. White simply developed the bishop to e2 and castled and did nothing to overcome this. Take a look at this position. White has a couple of ways they could play this, but after a series of very popular moves, we reach very easy quality. My recommendation is queen to c4 that is aimed at defending the knight over here, for instance, takes, and in this position, your bishop can go to e6. Both rooks have beautiful open lanes, and you could play the pawn move to a5 if you're worried that this dark square bishop is attacking a7. Don't forget that this pawn is hanging, so white likely plays over here. And welcome to the promised land. I think black is already equal over here. After the move d5, white has another way of playing, which is to take the knight. We'll take back, and they could play the move e5. We're not at all worried about this, as for the knight, there is this five-star luxury hotel waiting with the pina colada, e4 square, and we're now challenging the knight, as well as the pawn on e5. If they decide to trade, once again, there's very easy equality over here. Bishop simply will go to e6, and you're absolutely fine. Another way that white could play is, at first, play the move pawn to f4. Well, we're going to trade the knight and damage their pawn structure. And it's important to know that we're usually breaking the structure of white with the pawn move f6. You don't want to be waiting and get squeezed when this pawn is on e5. So it's a good idea to try and exchange it. There's a lot of pressure happening over here. Plus, we can create even more pressure. So usually they will just take. And once again, the game is pretty easy. For instance, bishop d6, queen d6. And both practically and objectively, you already are equal over here. Now let's go to idea number two. We discussed how white gave up the control over d5, so it makes sense that in some lines white could play the retreating move over here with this knight and go back to b3 in order to open up the queen and control the square on d5. The best objectively way to play here for black would be pawn to d6, and those who want to play without any risk should be aiming for this move. But my idea number two is spicy. It's the move a5. First of all, we want to push this pawn, kick away these pieces, and even push it to a3 to create weaknesses along the long the diagonal on the queen side. So very likely your opponents will play pawn to a4 to stop you. And guess what? That created the square on b4 for your knight. And so once again, you can be playing for the idea d5. With the perfect play, white will be slightly bit better. But if white plays a few inaccurate moves, you can take over and simply get a better position quickly with the black pieces out of the opening. All right. Now, the other ideas are going to be covering the so-called Yugoslav attack. But before we go there, I want to show you why they go so often wrong in this variation. This is the classical dragon formation where instead of developing the knight early on, you play the pawn move to d6. In this position, white very often wants to stop the idea of knight g4, which is aiming to attack this bishop, which is the protector of the knight. So they play f3, and then they will be developing the queen over here, and they will castle queenside. Well, guess what? Against your variation, it is not a good idea. They might still be trying to prevent this idea knight g4. Instead, you're going to castle. And after queen d2, you're ready to play pawn to d5. Why does it work so well? 
because this is a position that we can reach in the other variation of the dragon. But in that position, you have the knight on b8, pawn on d6, and so you're basically tempo down. You in that variation waste move on d6, and only then you're pushing the pawn to d5, in total wasting two moves to get that. Over here, you didn't waste no time. You have the pawn on d7 immediately, and so you can get what's considered to be a theoretical position, tempo up. This same idea, d5, works so well over here. For example, if they take, center blows up with their king in the center and black having a lot of pieces to fight in the middle. For example, knight takes d5, queen d5, and things look very, very good for the black pieces. Instead, if masters accidentally reach this position, they usually castle, and then we can take on d4 and blow up the center and blow up the center and have this fantastic position where I wouldn't be aiming to exchange the queens, instead play the queen move to c7, bishop e6 for the attack, rook to c8, and black's attacking chances are far, far better. So once again, let's go back over here. F3 is incorrect move order. If they do that, castles and quick d5 will get you a very good position. All right. The other way they could play this is if they play F3, castles, and now not queen d2, but instead bishop to c4. They're aiming at controlling that square. This is also incorrect move order because now you can play the idea queen d6. Not only you're hitting the pawn on b2, but you're preparing a discovered attack by your bishop by placing either their knight on g4 and hitting this, or playing the move knight to e4. For example, if they play queen to d2 over here, they think you're going to take here, and then there are all kinds of ideas of attacking our queen there. Instead, we have knight takes e4. Primarily, we're hitting the queen and the knight. And so perhaps they could play, for instance, f takes e4, and then this piece over here is lost. So we have this, 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 and your pawn up out of the opening. So one more time, if they place their queen on d2, you have this discovered attack. And some players will play bishop b3. That's the most common move in this position. And you could play knight takes e4, but my recommendation, because lines are a tiny bit simpler, is to go knight g4. Once again, we're discovering the attack against the knight on d4. For example, they take the knight because we were threatening their bishop. And now bang, 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 and bang. And already here you have equality. So pawn goes to d6, bishop goes to e6, and you can take back with the knight or take this and then develop the light score bishop. They have an isolated pawn. Things are looking great for black. Okay. What are other ways that they could be playing this position? Perhaps they could play knight takes c6. Of course, we don't want to take this way because they would be making and forcing us to concede the castling rights. So we take with the b pawn and they could play e5. In this position, unfortunately, we have to play knight g8. However, fortunately, they have overextended and we're going to equalize here as well. For example, f4, now this pony has a very nice way later to reach the square f5. If they are preventing that, we will break this structure with d6. Now it's attacked too many times and we can even exert more pressure. For example, this and this, and things are looking very good for black. Light square bishop can easily be developed to f5 or the knight, castle short, open b lane, open e lane, and we're the only people with the only person with the uh, pawns in the center to take away squares from the white's minor pieces. As we go back, typically they play queen to d2, and then the game is very easy. All you have to do is to remember to break this, either with f6 when your pawn is already gone on d lane, or d6 if it's still alive. For instance, let's give them a pawn. Grab, grab, grab. And there is a crazy initiative that we can develop up here. Knight f5 with the fork. They go back. Bishop a6. And you have more than enough for one pawn. I think anyone would be picking the black pieces over here. So once again, let's go back. If they take on c6, we grab it with the b pawn. And then e5, we can go back. We're ready to attack this overextended pawn. 
They could also play bishop d4 to defend it. A nice idea is queen e5 hitting that pawn. And after f4, we can play f6 over here to exert a lot of pressure against it. Force him to take. And once again, we have very nice center as our pawns are going to move forward. B lane for the rook and save king after we castle short. Life's good. All right. Next idea. The other way sometimes they play, instead of playing pawn to f3, they could also play over here queen to d2. So they change the move order, maybe they want to play f3 next or even castle first. And it's important to remember the holy idea knight to g4. So we're chasing away this dark square bishop. Very often because there is a lot of pressure against d4, they will take our knight. We this time can take with the d pawn because our queen and rook are connected. So, for example, have a trade. And now this bishop needs to run. You can even play king to f8. And life is very good. This pony, if it gets kicked away, you can develop it to e5. Your pawns go to b5. You could push it forward to b4. And then your light square bishop will take over this long diagonal. Remember, you are also controlling the open lane and preventing them from castling queenside. Nice. So we are looking at all of these weird move orders where white gets punished. So how on earth should they be playing this? Well, first of all, they should play bishop c4. That is aimed at controlling the square d5. Remember how great d5 is for us. And here, they should play bishop to b3. They're preventing those queen b6 ideas that are attacking the b2 pawn and preparing those discovered attacks. Then we're going to play d6, and then they should be preventing the move knight g4. So we will play bishop d7, for example, preparing rook to c8. And then they can play queen to d2 and finally castle queenside. So let's learn three last ideas, 8th, 9th, and 10th. How to play from this position if white has reached this in a healthy way. First, h4. You must know the idea of h5. Stagnating their attack. Remember, g4 is well, very well controlled by your pieces, although sometimes they might sacrifice that, and you're stopping them from pushing this h pawn further temporarily. So, for example, they can play queen to d2, preparing to castle and defend the square h6, where they're aiming at exchanging the most vital defender of your king. We're going to be playing rook to c8, aiming at the king, which is going to castle in a moment, and it's very good to develop this knight to e5 and c4 to exchange this vital defender of the white's queen side because this will allow our pieces to go to attacking squares on the queen side for example queen b1 so king b1 knight c4 we have a fork so they need to trade and here i give you a general plan you could play queen c7 rook c8 triple up a6 b5 b4 and that's how you attack the white's king and you, on the other hand, can also expect that white is going to be preparing a mutual corresponding attack on the king side. I promised you the attacking chances for you to play for the win. Enjoy these battles. All right. The other way that white could play is also just queen to d2 instead of throwing this h4, h5 pawn at you. And in here, I have very interesting idea takes on d4. And b5 that you absolutely must know. What is aimed at? It is aimed at throwing the pawn storm much faster than y does. For example, if they castle, you can play a5. And you can see that your pawn storm is much faster at the opponent's king than theirs at yours. And this gives you good chances to play this for a win. One more time out of this idea. Out of this position, the idea knight takes d4, takes and b5 immediately. Now, those of you who hate those attacks where people castle different way, I have the 10th interesting idea. Instead of letting them castle there, well, they, as we learned, should play bishop b3, then f3, then queen, then castle queenside. If they do that, you end up in uh, the right position as white. And those of you who don't want to play those positions, there is a move queen to a5, which pretty much forces them to castle to the side of the king side, which is not going to give you as sharp play. And uh, perhaps you're taking away white's most popular plan. How could they play here? Well, they could play queen to d2. And the reason why queen a5 works so well is because of this idea knight e4. 
we're revealing the attack over here. So pretty much regardless of your level, I think you're going to see knight takes e4 by white, which now can remove defender of the knight. And subsequently, you win everything back with dividends by taking on d4. You're going to be pawn up. So takes, and for example, takes. And here you're simply pawn up. So take a look at this move queen e5 aimed at preventing queenside castling by white. So if they castle short, this queen very often will just go back over here. For example, castles, knight b3 hits the queen, queen c7. And the main idea over here, how one should develop, is sort of d6, b6, bishop b7. You could also sometimes play the pawn move to a6, depending on what white plays. Knights can go to e5, g4, and welcome to a normal middle game. If you enjoyed today's video, consider hiring me as your personal online chess coach. My contacts are on the left. Thank you very much for watching and give me a suggestion of what you would like me to cover next. Thank you and bye-bye.